Is it possible that you're holding on to a grudging spirit and God has forgotten them? They're better off with God because God has forgotten it. They're moving on with their life and God is moving on with them while you're spinning your wheels in the sand mad at somebody that God ain't mad at. Tell somebody you're better off forgiving them. Uh, so when God let go, we must let go. Lest I charge, lest I'm charged. Let me hit this text and slide out of your way. You see, when you look at this text tonight, when Paul uses the word in verse 12, he is saying that he is not by any means complete, but is forever pressing on. Then he used two vivid pictures. He says that I'm trying to grasp that for which I have been grasped by Christ for. Paul says, I'm at a place now in my life that I understand that when I was walking down the Damascus Road, minding my own business, and for some reason God saw fit to grasp me. But when he grasped me, Paul says, he had something in mind. Oh, bless his name. He says that I'm trying to grasp that thing that I was grasped for. And that's a wonderful thought. Paul felt that when Christ stopped him on the Damascus Road, that he had a vision and a purpose for Paul. God have not grabbed you for no reason. And Paul felt that all his life was bound to press on. Lest he fail Jesus and frustrate Christ's dream for him. Every one of us in here has been grasped by Christ for some purpose. And therefore all of us in all of our life should press on. So that we should grasp the purpose for which we were grasped for. In other words, tell your sister he snatched you. When he snatched you for a reason and with purpose in mind. You see, what I'm trying to work up to is to tell you why Paul finally got to the place where he said, I got to let some stuff go. You see, we need to understand that the fact that we were rolling on in our life of sin, the fact that God didn't let us continue that way, that God grasped us. And when he grasped us, we cannot ignore the fact that we didn't get saved because we wanted to get saved. No man comes unto the Father except the Father draw him. So what is this reason that God interrupted my wonderful life of sin? Lord have mercy. I know we told that a lot of time about God saved me from a miserable life of sin. Well maybe you didn't know where to hang out at. But when God saved us from a wonderful life of sin to a better life called salvation, I wonder why did God interrupt my life? Why did God grab me? Why did God apprehend me? Sooner or later, ladies, you got to get to a place in your life where you're trying to apprehend the very thing that you have been apprehended for. Paul got to the place where he says I've been out here long enough. I need to get my hands on the very thing that God has preordained for me to put my hands on. I look at your name and say sister you don't have time to waste. You need to find your purpose. Now listen here now. Let me work my way up here now. To that end Paul is saying two things. He said he is forgetting the things which are behind him. That is to say he will never glory in any of his achievements and failures or sob in his disappointments or use them as an excuse for relaxation. In effect, Paul is saying that we Christians must forget all that we have done and remember what we still have to do. In our Christian life, there is no room for us to desire to rest upon our laurels. We, like Paul, we are also reaching out for those things which are in front of us. The word he used for reaching is very visible and used for a racer who's going hard for the finishing line. 
It describes him with eyes for nothing but the goal. It describes the man who is going flat for the finish line. So Paul said that the Christian life, we must forget everything in past in order to get the goal that's ahead of us. Lord, have mercy. Paul had to forgive himself for his past attacks on the Christians. He had to forgive himself for how he attacked the Christian faith and how he attacked saved individuals, how he stood in agreement for the stoning of Deacon Stephen. Paul had chained himself to his past. Paul realized that as long as I've been out here now on the road of conversion, preaching and setting up churches, Paul came to the conclusion over here in Philippians that I'm still chained to my past. Paul had a ball and chain to his past. It was a ball and chain, but he could not see it. He was chained, but there were no chains. Therefore, he was chained to his past mentally. He was chained to his past only in his mind. And Paul says, I got to forgive myself and let this thing go. So Paul realizes that I cannot obtain if I am retained in my past in my past pains in my past disappointments so he concludes and simultaneously he instructs us in his conclusion to forget now this is where my problem comes in with trying to understand sister buckram the intent of the writer of our text because I'm trying to figure out how can this great Apostle Paul say that he is forgetting when he knows that he remembers. I'm trying to figure that thing out. How in the world that Apostle Paul come out I'm forgetting when you know that you remember. Therefore, I'm trying to figure this thing out. How can I say that I'm forgetting when I know that I know every element of my pain, detail to detail. What is Paul doing here? Is he playing with my mind at such a critical, pivoting point in my life? Is Paul playing with my mind? Or is Paul giving us a play on the wording of the text? Because unless my brain still corrupts or erupts, I can't remember. Unless my cerebrum and my cerebellum seriously malfunction, I'm well able to remember the details of my pain. Well, what about you? You remember every pain. You remember every scar. You remember every teardrop. Come on, women. You remember more than a man. It's a confirmed fact that women are like incubators. Everything that happened, they incubate it. They nurture it. It grows. They don't forget it. They don't let it go. They hold on to it. We remember. I remember when. You remember when. I remember who. You remember who. I remember how. You remember how. You can't take it out of history. It happened. And ain't no need saying to yourself that it didn't really happen. Tell somebody it did happen. If you were abused, then you were abused. You can't take it out of history. If you were raped, you can't take it out of history. If you were used, you can't take it out of history. 